Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Chantelle, and welcome back to the Trace Cakey's channel. If you've clicked on the title of this video, then chances are you too are wondering if eczema is caused by allergies. Well, today we are going to talk about what causes eczema, a disorder otherwise known as atopic dermatitis. Several years ago, when I was still practicing in retail pharmacy, this topic came up a lot. My patients would think if they could just figure out what they were allergic to, then they could cure their eczema. <sighs> One of the most common misconceptions about eczema is that it is caused by an allergy to something. This belief goes back a long way. The actual term eczema was first described in detail in 1813 by a medical author, Bateman, who described this skin reaction as a result of an unknown allergy, and that theory stood for nearly 200 years. In this video, I will explain how science slowly figured out that the cause of eczema is a direct result of disruption of the skin barrier, not from allergies, but instead from inherited genetic abnormalities, which prevents you from growing a normal functioning skin barrier. This is a positive game changer for developing improved eczema treatments. After watching this video, you will have a better understanding about the various genetic disruptions that relates to you and how you can use this knowledge to avoid flares. Eczema is a difficult disorder to live with. It comes and it goes, and some flare-ups are worse than others. It's painful, embarrassing, and unfortunately, there is no cure, yet. You might still be wondering, if it's not caused by allergies, then why is the flare treatment aimed at the immune system, right? In this case, steroids are often prescribed to treat the results of a flare, which is because during a flare, the skin is under attack by your immune system. Sometimes steroids are needed to calm down the immune system and give your skin a chance to repair itself. Because chronic use of steroids has many negative side effects, I have always been very passionate about teaching my patients how to avoid flares and lessen the need for steroids. I hope by helping more people understand the cause of eczema, they can better take control of their flares. Unfortunately, treating the root cause of eczema is complicated. That is because now we know that not everyone has eczema for the same reasons. It turns out there are several reasons. Eczema has now become an umbrella term used to describe the result of one or more inherited DNA deletions affecting our skin cells. As a result of these deletions, all eczema sufferers end up with an impaired skin barrier more specifically, a dehydrated skin barrier. And that is why it's an umbrella term. No matter which deletion they inherited, all people arrive at the same result of a dehydrated skin barrier. Therefore, they all get the same diagnosis, eczema. And because people with eczema don't have a normal skin barrier, there are all sorts of consequences that follow, including infections, ridiculously itchy skin, and worst of all, the development of other allergic disorders, such as asthma or even food allergies. This is why Bateman, that old doctor, and so many other medical professionals believe that eczema was an allergic disorder because nearly all eczema patients will go on to develop allergic conditions. I see how it could be easy to make a rational leap that allergic conditions could cause an impaired skin barrier. This is similar to the chicken and the egg argument. Which came first? It turns out, just like eggs lead to chickens, it's a one-way street with eczema too. Eczema leads to allergies, not the other way around. We're still not too sure about the chicken or the egg though. Who was first? I know this sounds confusing, and I bet you're wondering, how did science set out to prove this? How did they know to focus on the dehydration status of the skin barrier? Especially because there are millions of people out there with allergies and not eczema. Medicine has been grappling for a long time, to which to focus on treating first in an eczema patient, their skin or their allergies. In order to understand this question, they really needed to figure out the core cause of eczema. What was the common link? It was really a 200-year-old medical mystery, which was finally solved in 2005. Scientists caught a break on this topic after several observational studies were performed on people with eczema and those with systemic allergies. They set out to observe and compare the dehydration status of skin barriers in several groups of people, which is what an observational study means. They don't do treatments, they just want to find correlations among specific groups of people and see if that leads to any clues. And it did! In one particular study I felt illustrated this point well, it was published in the Journal of Allergies and Clinical Immunology. And I like it because it's a very simple way to illustrate that dehydrated skin barrier is the common thread in eczema patients, not allergies. I've attached a link to the study below if you want to read through it. In this study, researchers set out to see if a child who has systemic allergies, such as asthma or allergic rhinitis, will also have eczema or at least a dehydrated skin barrier that could lead to eczema later in life. In the study, they gathered a group of children ages 5 to 18 and separated them into three groups. Group 1, those with eczema. 
of course. Group two, those with asthma or other allergic conditions. And finally, group three, the control group, those with no known allergies or skin conditions. Then they performed a standardized test that measures the transdermal water loss in the skin, which is the hydration status of the barrier I've been mentioning so much. It was no surprise that the eczema group had higher scores on their skin water loss, meaning their barriers lost a lot more water, and the higher the score, the more severe their disease seemed to be. The next part of the study is very interesting though, because the group that had other inflammatory diseases, group two, did not show a significant difference from the control group in their skin hydration status meaning that people in the group with allergies had normal skin barriers, just as the control group. The author was surprised by this finding as well, concluding that inflammation from other allergic disorders is not contributing to the water loss in skin as previously theorized. If that were the case, then the children with allergic disorders would have also had more water loss in their skin. This seems obvious to science in retrospect, as the past always does, but at the time of this study, this was a big breakthrough because it went directly against what was thought for the past 200 years. These studies show that the causation arrow of people with eczema that develop allergies only goes in one direction. The direction starts with eczema and ends with high levels of internal inflammation that can lead to other systemic allergies. But it doesn't go the other way. Patients who already have inflammation from diseases other than eczema had normal amounts of water loss in their skin. This study, and others like it, observe that overactive immune response isn't contributing to a dehydrated skin barrier. It must be something else that's affecting the skin barrier. So we're done, right? I just explained how science knows that allergies do not cause eczema, answering the question of the title of this video. But does that really answer your question? I think your next question should be, if allergies are not causing the skin barrier to break down, then what is? Well, you are in luck because technology has supercharged our knowledge on this topic since these water loss and allergy studies were done. And if you keep watching, we will get right into the why, the how, and what you can do about it. Since all eczema patients have a compromised skin barrier, scientists then set their sights on the components of this barrier. The skin barrier is made up of many working parts, just like a chain link. It only takes one weak link to break. Perhaps they could figure out which link was breaking and solve the mystery. Just 15 years ago, geneticists discovered a huge part of this mystery. Geneticists identified one common specific genetic mutation, a deletion in fact. This deletion is so common, scientists believe that it is the cause of at least half of all eczema cases, filigrin. This guy has a lot of responsibility, but the main job of filigrin is to be the molecular glue that holds together the stretchy parts between skin cells and create a watertight bond. They make a solid stretchy wall to keep the outside world where it should be, outside, and keep water inside. Now then, you can imagine what would happen if filigrin didn't show up. The outside cells are not holding tightly together and things are getting in that shouldn't be allowed. That is exactly what's happening in half of all eczema patients. Their filigrin is missing. How does that happen? Geneticists found a deletion on chromosome one in the exact spot that contains the instructions for the body to know how to make filigrin. Basically, it's a genetic how-to manual for this glue protein that somehow this chromosome didn't get. And because it's on our chromosome, our most basic human of blueprints, it's inherited. The group of humans missing this instruction manual for filigrin are scientifically identified as having a filigrin null allele. Well, what about the other half of people with eczema? How did their skin barrier become tweaking? Again, the answer lies with genetics. There are a bunch of other smaller occurring genetic mutations that contribute to a weakening skin barrier, which account for the other half of people who suffer from eczema. Many of these are caused by a microdeletion in just one nucleic acid of DNA, the exact wrong place. This causes a certain process to malfunction, just a little, just enough to cause a problem. I think it's interesting for you to know that we all have microdeletions. In fact, geneticists estimate everyone has at least four to five billion of them in our DNA at any given time. Some just happen to cause eczema. The next most significant genetic deletion that's been identified occurs inside our keratinocytes. These are the cells that make the filigrin in the skin barrier. And in these people, their chromosomes were just fine. But for some reason, they had a microdeletion in the genetic code that completes the last steps of making filigrin. So they have the genetic manual for filigrin, but one or more pages is missing and therefore they still don't get filigrin. Okay, that's two for filigrin. But what about disorders that don't target filigrin? This time, scientists have found a deletion on chromosome 18. This tiny mistake affects the manufacturing of another protein called desmoglein-1. 
This protein is just as important as oil is to an engine or water is to a plant. Normally, desmoglyan 1 is also found in the skin cells and happens to be very concentrated in the outer layer. So if you're missing the code to make desmoglyan 1, then all of your skin cells are going to be dehydrated, especially those in the barrier wall. You can have just fine filigrin, but still dehydrated cells because of the lack of desmoglyan 1. People who suffer from these types of genetic disorders, the missing filigrin or the desmoglyan 1, typically have noticeably dry skin that leads to small red bumps, even thickening in the areas that are being rubbed a lot. Areas like inside the elbows, the wrists, the neck. The best way to treat this is aggressive moisturizing, especially in the problem areas. Because your problem is barrier dehydration, you can keep it hydrated with lotions and creams. Apply thick occlusive creams to the problem areas and use light, fully absorbing creams daily everywhere else. This will help those keratinocytes hold the line of the skin barrier better. On the other hand, if your eczema flares tend to start first with red blotches, itchiness, maybe warm swollen areas, then you probably have a genetically inherited disorder that's targeting the immune cells that live just under your skin barrier. This type of genetic disorder is a peculiar story, one that is much more about eczema as it is about the amazing human body and an evolutionary adaptation. This story starts with a group of immune cells called Langerhans cells. They're very important immune cells that live in our epidermis, where the barrier is located. Like most immune cells in our body, they start in the bone marrow, mature, and migrate up to the skin, where they take up residence. The job of these cells is to be the skin's watchdogs, not warriors, just the one with the blowhorns. Their entire job is to sound the alarm that a pathogen has penetrated the barrier. Intruder! <laughs> in this case, there is something strange going on on the surface of these Langerhan cells. Every single cell in our body has docking stations on the surface. I like to think of docking stations as keyholes. All cells have millions of keyholes made to fit specific molecules like a key. When the right molecule fits the keyhole, made just for it, the key turns, the lock opens, causing the cell to do something, to take an action. Normally, Langerhan cells do not have keyholes for a protein called IgE. But for a large group of people who have eczema, their Langerhans cells do have a keyhole for IgE, and this leads to inflammatory responses. IgE is a protein that our immune system uses for emergencies. IgE is meant to round up the troops and other immune cells and attack the problem. It's an aggressive cellular communicator. So if you happen to be born with Langerhan cells that have a docking station for IgE, then every time your Langerhan cells encounters a pathogen, even typically harmless pathogen, the IgE is gonna blow the immune response way out of proportion. And that's what's happening in a large group of eczema patients. When a small pathogen like a virus, pollen, or maybe just a synthetic fragrance lands on your skin surface, it might wiggle down into the barrier where it's spotted by these Langerhan cells who communicate really loudly and aggressively with IgE and cause the immune system to overreact and attack the skin in full force. This is why your flares start with red, swollen skin. So why would our bodies do this? Why would so many people have this response? I thought evolution was supposed to make things better. It turns out people with this Langerhans abnormal keyhole also have a deletion of another very important immune protein. This part gets a little too crazy in depth for the purposes of the video. So the gist of it is, that the Langerhan cells anomaly is actually a workaround for something that would be a much bigger problem in the immune system. These people have a deletion higher up in the communication relay of the immune system, which infects the entire network. This micro deletion higher up in the relay would be analogous to destroying a satellite signal, sending cellular signals to antennas on Earth. If the satellite's down, the antennas on Earth are useless. But maybe you could do a workaround, Sign the signals through some wires or something. That way you could still communicate. This IgE Langerhans keyhole is doing just that. It's kind of a backup system for the immune cells to communicate and one you should be grateful for. Without this anomaly on your Langerhans cells, you probably wouldn't have survived past the first year of life because your immune system wouldn't be communicating with each other. Therefore, evolution figured out that you could use IgE to get around this deletion in the immune system. It could keep the communication up and going. That's why Langerhans cells and other cells in the body have developed keyholes for IgE that is otherwise not normal for people to have. Unfortunately, because IgE is so powerful, it's now the main communicator in your immune system. 
Over time, the immune system becomes very hypersensitive to IgE responses. This is happening in the skin as well as all over the body. Unfortunately, this can lead to asthma, food allergies, and more. The good news is, this workaround is usually not even noticed by people. It often goes undetected and very few people develop life-threatening IgE allergic reactions. It really is a win for evolution and our amazing body to figure out this workaround, which could have been a much bigger problem. To prevent flares with this type of eczema, be diligent about protecting your skin barrier and paying attention to what makes your skin sensitive. For me, detergents and synthetic fragrances. Those will activate my immune response every single time. Also, moisturizing helps me by putting an artificial barrier on the surface of my skin, creating a little distance between outside irritants and my skin. Additionally, focusing on the skin's microbiome plays a big role in this type of eczema. Creams with colloidal oatmeal, zinc, and other certain natural oils have been shown to help repair skin barriers and encourage healthy growth of our skin's good bacteria. The most helpful oils found in moisturizers are safflower, grapeseed, sunflower, and hemp, all which contain the best types of fats for our skin. They are high in amounts of linoleic acid, and that's good fat for our skin. We've also learned that other oils low in linoleic acid are coconut, olive oil, and mango butter. Those will make your skin worse. It's probably easier just to pick out formulations made for eczema. That way the formulator has put the right oils in. It helps to pick a moisturizer made for eczema because they should be formulated with the good oils for eczema and not the irritating kind. To recap, I've highlighted the big obvious genetic abnormalities that directly contribute to a weakened and dysfunctional skin barrier. Unfortunately, I've hardly scratched the surface of the list of known genetic mutations related to eczema, and I'm quite certain geneticists will find more. Now, I wonder one out of five people will suffer from eczema in their life. With so many actors involved in the eczema plot, it only takes one to go awry to cause a flare. But what is important for you to know is that you can improve your eczema symptoms by really paying attention to the health of your skin barrier. Moisturize daily and pay attention to what irritates your skin. It may seem far off now, but scientists will find a cure for these genetic diseases. Look how far we've already come in 15 years. I will end with a quote from an optimist and a famous scientist who won two unshared Nobel Prizes. He was born all the way back in 1902, long before the advantages of modern technology. Linus Pauling. And he says, more interesting discoveries than we can ever imagine will be made, and I am awaiting them full of curiosity and enthusiasm. Just think, when he said this, gene therapies wouldn't be invented for almost another century. Yeah, I bet he knew it would be possible, and so should you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>